major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Bill Howe Family of Companies, providing San Diego with plumbing, heating and air, restoration, flood and remodeling services for over 40 years. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE or visit BillHowe.com. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Good evening. It's Friday, April 15th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amitha Sharma, in for Maya Chabulsi. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria today unveiled his proposed budget for the next fiscal year. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowen says it relies on one-time funding that will soon run out. San Diego's economy is recovering, with sales tax revenues way up compared to last year. But Gloria is still having to use leftover funds from the federal COVID relief package approved last year. That allowed the mayor to raise spending by 5% for an $8.9 billion budget that he says makes no significant cuts to any department. Gloria held his press conference by a stormwater pump in Mission Beach that he says has been needing emergency repairs for 12 years. With this budget, and this year, we are going to finally allocate the funding needed to fix the electrical equipment and to lay the groundwork for the full rebuild of this station. San Diego's stormwater drains and pumps are the most underfunded category of infrastructure in the city. It will need to find an extra $1.4 billion over the next five years to fully fund those repairs, which are critical to preventing floods and keeping pollution out of beaches and bays. The city also faces a chronic shortage of workers who can do those repairs. That's why Gloria is also also budgeting for raises that he hopes will help recruit and retain employees. The only way that gets addressed is if you're providing competitive pay and benefits. In this environment, in this hiring environment, it's a real challenge, uh, but this budget does allow us to try and meet that challenge. The City Council will soon kick off a month-long review of the budget proposal. Gloria is slated to present a revised budget in May, with a final council vote scheduled for June. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. Strike averted. Thousands of California grocery store workers have approved a new contract with major supermarket chains. The union said members ratified a tentative deal that was reached last week. It grants some 47,000 employees higher wages, stronger health benefits, and other benefits. Workers had voted to authorize a strike if a new contract wasn't reached. The state of California is delaying enforcement of a COVID-19 vaccine requirement for school kids. KPBS health reporter Matt Hoffman says there remains a question of when the federal government will approve shots for kids under 16. Students across California won't have state-required COVID-19 vaccinations for the upcoming school year. We don't have full FDA approval and uh, we recognize the implementation challenges that uh, schools and school leaders would face that we are not uh, moving to have a vaccine requirement for uh, schools in this coming academic year and no sooner than July uh, 2023. Coronavirus vaccines have emergency use authorization for kids as young as five, but full FDA approval has only been granted for ages 16 and up. San Diego Unified officials say they're continuing to monitor developments, but board trustee Richard Barrera says the state's announcement won't impact the district's existing vaccination requirement. We're moving forward with our vaccine mandate because our vaccine mandate is for students age 16 and above because there's already full FDA approval for students in that age group. Barrera says the requirement kicks in for students 16 and older starting in the upcoming summer term with full implementation in the fall. He says right now 80% of the district students ages 16 and up are fully vaccinated. Unfortunately, the students between 5 and 12 is still hovering in that 35 to 40% range. Once FDA approval is given for younger children, Barrera says San Diego Unified 
worldwide will move to include them under their vaccine mandate. And word from the FDA could be coming sooner rather than later. This is a standard timeline. I expect full approval to come relatively soon. Of course, I have no crystal ball into the inside of FDA, but I know that they're working on that. Mark Sawyer is a member of the local chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. He also sits on the FDA advisory committee that gave emergency authorization for the vaccines. He says data continues to show they're safe. Pediatricians are still fully in support of immunization all the way down to age five. It will help with outbreaks in schools. State officials are implementing new programs to try and increase the vaccination rate among younger kids. They're also making millions of dollars in funding available for vaccination sites to stay open later for working families. Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. Ukrainian armed forces say Russia is already retaliating for the dramatic sinking of its flagship cruiser in the Black Sea. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is now warning, he's now warning the world that something worse may be coming. Mike Valerio has the latest. Only hours after the Moskova sank to the bottom of the Black Sea, new fears of Russian retaliation. The Russian prestige, uh, you know, the, the Navy uh, prestige has been badly damaged by this. The Ukrainian armed forces say Russia launched new strikes to avenge the sinking of the Russian warship. Noise. The noise of a rocket flying and explosions. That's what I saw and heard when I was in the shop. Multiple explosions left at least two people dead outside an Orthodox church in the southern city of Mykolaiv. People ran into the store and I saw people scared. I saw people dropping to the ground from explosions. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says all of the countries of the world should prepare for the possibility of Russian President Vladimir Putin using tactical nuclear weapons. We should think, not, not, uh, not be afraid, I mean that not be afraid, be ready given the setbacks that they've faced so far militarily, um, none of us can take lightly um, the threat posed by a potential resort to, to tactical nuclear weapons or low-yield nuclear weapons. This, as a senior U.S. defense official says, the first flight of $800 million in U.S. military aid is expected to reach Ukraine in the next 24 hours. It's a package of more sophisticated and heavier-duty weaponry, including 11 helicopters initially earmarked for Afghanistan. Mike Valerio, KPBS News. Shaking was felt in parts of San Diego County as an earthquake hit offshore. A magnitude 4.6 struck at 9.30 last night on the Aqua Blanca Fault west of Ensenada, Mexico. Then, the U.S. Geological Survey reported a magnitude 4 quake at 9.48 this morning northwest of San Clemente Island. However, the agency later said that it was a false alarm caused by a computer glitch. It's Good Friday, the day when Christians around the world mark the day the Bible says Christ was crucified. KPBS reporter John Carroll shows us two very different ways local Christians observed the day. The familiar strains of amazing grace filling the spring air atop Mount Helix, a hymn written by a former slave trader who became an abolitionist, carrying a message that forgiveness and redemption are possible no matter what. And so we are grateful that you all were able to come even though it is a weekday. Members of Hillcrest's University Christian Church holding their Good Friday observance here for the first time. A crown of thorns on display, reminding everyone of what this day is all about for Christians. In downtown San Diego, there's nothing unusual about seeing people walking, but look a little closer. These pedestrians have a distinct purpose. This is the 29th annual Good Friday Walk with the Suffering, a reenactment of the Stations of the Cross. The 15 episodes Christian scripture says Jesus experienced on his journey to Calvary. Students from Cristo Rey High School taking the parts of Roman soldiers and of Christ. This is Station 14. Jesus is laid in the tomb. The infamous journey of more than 2,000 years ago is brought into the present. The stop at each station, a chance to reflect on problems faced by humanity in the early 21st century. So here we're thinking about 
the suffering of environmental destruction. And on they went, marching to their destination, the San Diego Rescue Mission. Well, I hope it helps people remember um, there's more to Easter than the Easter Bunny. This is the 29th annual walk. Rosemary Johnston started it, and she's coordinated every walk ever since. This year, the war in Ukraine is shaping her view of Good Friday. Everyone, their heart bleeds for what is going on, and we feel powerless. And at times like that, we need to turn to God in prayer and ask for guidance and forgiveness of the oppressors, as well as aid to those who have been victims. I've always wanted to do it, and this is a perfect moment. Xavier Sawaya is a freshman at Cristo Rey High School. He portrayed Jesus. His understanding of the events of the first Good Friday is straightforward. It was a day of pain and sorrow, but in the end, it's light. He resurrected. He saved our souls. This march is, of course, a Christian event, but Rosemary Johnston says she hopes the foundational message of forgiveness and ultimate love reaches every Everyone, whether they're people of faith or not. John Carroll, KPBS News. San Diego County's unemployment rate dropped to 3.4% last month. That's according to figures released today by the State Employment Development Department. March's rate is down from a revised 4% in February. It's also lower than the statewide average of 4.2% and the nationwide average of 3.8%. Leisure and hospitality saw the biggest month-over-month -month gains, adding 5,000 jobs. As the job market heats up, the Navy is offering large bonuses for new sailors. KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh has the story. Starting this month, the Navy will offer a $25,000 signing bonus for any potential sailor who agrees to ship out to boot camp by the end of July, says Commander David Yoon. We are in a uh, talent acquisition competition. Uh, with Fortune 500 companies uh, and the uh, the commercial sector at large, uh, you know, obviously the uh, unemployment is is being driven down, and there's a a competition to try and get uh, talent in the front door. Uh, whether you're Walmart, UPS, Amazon, any number of other co uh, companies. The Navy continued to meet its recruiting goals even during the pandemic. But as companies offer higher starting salaries and better benefits, the Navy is falling behind. Several bonuses have sprung up. Naval Aviation is offering up to $175,000 to retain some pilots. We all know the uh, the kind of uh, downturn that the aviation industry took uh, at the you know as COVID came to its its uh, zenith, and then um, basically the, the the airlines are hiring. Inflation is another factor. The Biden administration is already proposing a 4.6 percent pay raise for all troops, the largest jump in 20 years. But some Democrats say it should be even higher. The Navy is particularly sensitive to the cost of living since so much of the fleet is based in pricey areas like San Diego. Uh, you know, with uh, especially with housing and gas prices, obviously those have gone through the roof over the past uh, uh, gas, specifically the past couple of months. But housing, you know, for the past couple of years, that has a, a huge negative impact on uh, on a, a sailors or active duty service members. Steve Walsh, KPBS News. A year and a half ago, San Diego started a radical experiment with housing policy. It approved Complete Communities, a program that allows developers to build apartments near public transit with unlimited density and unlimited height. In exchange, they have to set aside a greater share of their homes as affordable housing. KPBS Metro reporter Andrew Bowman says the program is showing results and sparking opposition. Construction is just getting started at 901 West Washington Street in Mission Hills. This is where Sohail Nakshab is building 54 studio apartments. They'll be compact, he says, like a Swiss army knife. As you can see from these renderings, we have built-in uh, sofa that transitions and becomes a bed. We have tables that come out of the wall, abundant storage. Nakshab is using Complete Communities, a program that lets developers build as many apartments as will fit on a given lot, with no limits on density or height. Instead, the limit is on floor space, meaning the taller the building, the more slender it has to be. It's a new approach to housing that encourages smaller, less expensive homes. And if the goal was to get more housing built, early results show it's working. If Nakshab were to build 
according to the site's official zoning, his project would shrink from 54 homes to nine, and the five low- and middle-income affordable homes in his project would be gone. Think about it. If it's only nine units and I'm already into the land for $2 million, I have to build super high-end luxury just to recover my initial basis into the property. These are not going to be rentals, it's just going to be super bougie units. That doesn't really add value to our community, it doesn't activate our communities. Unlimited height might conjure images of skyscrapers, but most, if not all, the complete communities projects are around eight stories or less. Nakshab says high rises trigger expensive building code requirements that don't make economic sense. Specifically with these urban infill sites that are so small, it consumes so much of the footprint that you're not really able to find the sweet spot of maximizing the dwelling units that you're trying to achieve, which is the goal for everybody, is create more dwelling units. Nakshab's project is one of four apartment buildings that's been approved under Complete Communities. Another 10 projects are pending approval, and more are popping up every month. Altogether, the program has tripled the number of homes that would normally be allowed on these sites. So we will have some um, on-grade parking, and then we'll have a little bit of below-grade parking. Another project using Complete Communities is Shoreline. It's 100% affordable, low-income housing, mostly two- and three-bedrooms, right by the Grantville trolley station. Marie Allen of Affirmed Housing says it wasn't unlimited height or density that attracted her to Complete Communities. It was relief from development impact fees. The program gives a steep discount on those fees for affordable housing. Allen says that saved the project about a million dollars, which helped immensely when applying for affordable housing tax credits. Um, the, the savings that Complete Communities provided meant that we needed less subsidy from the state. And the less subsidy we ask for from the state, the more competitive we are. And if we're not competitive, then we have to wait another six, nine months to apply again. Complete Communities is designed to be resistant to neighborhood opposition, letting projects bypass the Planning Commission and City Council and get approval directly from city staffers. But that opposition hasn't gone away. I'm extremely opposed to this building. This is just way too much, too big. A seven-story building will... Uh, stand out. What is the community getting out of this? My that was Nicole Phillips, Kim Emerson, Blake Thomier, and Francis Pritchett speaking at a recent meeting of the Normal Heights Community Planning Group. They're all opposed to a seven-story, 175-unit apartment building proposed right here on Adams Avenue. The developer intends to use complete communities to build more than six times the density and more than double the height. Resident Adam Deutsch sums it up. My sense is that this project simply doesn't fit the community plan. Still, the community plan for Normal Heights hasn't been updated in a quarter century. And in a housing market where scarcity is driving steep inflation in home prices and rents, Complete Communities is proving extremely effective at getting a lot more housing built fast. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News. A new program is on the way to provide free public transit for San Diegans age 18 and younger. The Sandag Youth Opportunity Pass pilot program includes the trolley, coaster and buses. Youth with these passes can start getting free rides on the Metropolitan Transit System and North County Transit starting May 1st. High school student John Segovia says this program will now make it possible for him to use public transit to get to school. My family was never um, able to consider public transportation as a viable option to go to school. Um, I'm a resident at City Heights and I go to Patrick Henry. To take part, children 18 and under will have to sign up for a Youth Pronto app account or a Youth Pronto card. Information on Pronto can be found at sdmts.com. The program will run through June 30th of next year. Coastal clouds are still around for us as we head through the next few days. And then we're going to be talking about a storm system largely staying north throughout the weekend. It will bring some wet weather to central California, but really not in our area. So we're missing out on the moisture. We will have a warming trend into early next week, though. And those numbers could be in the 70s in some spots easily. As we work through tonight, we've got lows back into the 50s, 58 for San Diego. As you look towards Escondido, 50 in Mount Laguna coming back into the 40s. 
east here. Transitioning into Saturday, well, here's that storm system I told you will stay largely north. We'll see some of those showers right even into Point Conception. The showers do make it, but again, this action all stays to our north. So we're not going to get in on the rainy weather, but we will still have the coastal clouds giving way to more afternoon sunshine. 71 for the high in San Diego. Oceanside coming in at 68. As you work your way towards Borrego Springs, lower 80s. Sunday, the warmth trying to rebound here after that storm system cuts its way through the west. So we will see some of those numbers go up Sunday into Monday. Notice the coast here hanging on to about 70 degrees all throughout. No big changes for us. We've got those clouds pretty thick for Saturday. They'll give way to more sunshine and then I think we have a brighter time, although there will still be some clouds for Sunday and Monday. Now inland communities, this is where we start to notice that warming trend and you can find it climbing through the 70s on Sunday back to the mid 70s for Monday. Again, looking brighter, drier, certainly will be pretty mild. One thing we'll have to keep in mind, though, Saturday could be a little blustery, especially towards the mountains here. So we do have some of those concerns for some gusty winds on Saturday. After that, then, again, the trend is to go up a little bit, back to the mid-60s for mountain locations and looking a little brighter, too. For the desert communities, staying dry throughout and bright as we cruise to the mid-90s by the time we get into Monday. For KPBS News, I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Melissa Constancer. Elon Musk wants Twitter, but the board of directors is making moves to keep that from happening with something called a poison pill. It's a provision that preserves the right for Twitter shareholders other than Musk to acquire more shares of the company at a relatively inexpensive price, which would effectively dilute his stake. It will be triggered if any investor gets more than 15% of the company's shares. Musk currently has about 9% of Twitter's shares. The poison pill won't necessarily stop his acquisition bid, but it could make it more pricey and encourage him to come to the negotiating table with the company. Is the 40-hour work week outdated? SDSU's Miro Kopik tells us about an idea that would change how much time Californians spend on the job in the Friday Business Report. Assembly Bill 2932 is calling for a 32-hour work week, a reduction from the traditional 40-hour work week for non-union workers at large companies, so companies that have 500 or more employees. Some companies have tested this 32-hour work week, like Microsoft. Microsoft has tested it in some of its divisions, and what they say is they saw 40% increase in productivity for workers working less, but they get do more while they're there in the office. If you look around the world, the European Union has an average of about a 36-hour work week. Iceland tested a 32 hour work week and they looked and they saw really good results and they may have implemented. Again, a very small country, but Japan, the government is now recommending to make it formal policy that workers work a 32 hour week. So there's a lot of information out there that allows, you know, to kind of validate a 32 hour work week. Music lovers unite in California for Coachella this weekend. It's the Massive Music Festival's big return after a two-year pandemic hiatus. Harry Styles, Billie Eilish, and Doja Cat are among the artists performing. Samantha Lonely Bow spoke to some campers who were eager to get the party started. Thousands of festival goers are flooding the desert as the Coachella Valley Music Festival gets ready to kick off after being canceled for two years. We're stoked. We're just ready to get pumping in the do lab and just have a fun time. And there's a lot of bands I haven't seen in the past couple of years, so just kind of seeing some live music. For many, it's a yearly tradition. They're excited to welcome back. Well, this is my third. Actually, it's my second Coachella. This will be my ninth year. I think it's my 16th time. Early Thursday morning, people from all over the world packed their cars, pitched their tents, and set up for the big weekend. I asked many of them why they're opting to camp rather than getting a hotel or an Airbnb. Get into the experience. Your cell phone doesn't really work. You know, you can kind of just pass out at the end of the night at your campsite. It's, I'm all in. <laughs> we kind of just like keeping it real, going barefoot, enjoying the time. It's an experience many say they've been waiting for. Uh, honestly, it's the whole thing about being in a group, community and just like immerse yourself into the festival. 
The moon will not be blue this weekend. Instead, it will be pink. NASA says the pink full moon will illuminate the sky through Monday morning. The moon should be at its peak fullness tomorrow. It's also called a Passover moon because its appearance coincides with the Jewish holiday, which begins at sundown. It's a chance to discover the great outdoors in honor of National Park Week. Entrance fees will be waived tomorrow, and that includes San Diego's own National Park, Cabrillo National Monument. If you're checking out another park like Yosemite or Joshua Tree, you should know camping fees are still in effect. But you don't have to leave home to see some of the world's most amazing national parks. David Daniel has this preview. Around the world, the more isolated the national park, the more unusual its creatures, yeah, yeah. and the more extraordinary their behaviors. Former President Barack Obama narrates the Netflix documentary series, Our Great National Parks. Filmmakers made nearly three dozen expeditions to 10 countries on five continents, including a rare site on the coast of Gabon. Surfing hippos. Surfing hippos is probably one of the hardest. Yeah, yeah they were really hard because where do you choose to go and film along a beach that's 40 miles long? It was fantastically satisfying to get that scene and to see the hippos using the waves to commute up and down the beach to their grazing ground. Half of the world's more than 4,000 national parks have been established in the last 50 years, part of a global effort to preserve wild places for future generations. Our Great National Parks is now streaming on Netflix. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And you can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Major funding for KPBS Evening Edition has been made possible in part by Bill Howe Family of Companies, providing San Diego with plumbing, heating and air, restoration, flood and remodeling services for over 40 years. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE or visit billhowe.com. And by the Conrad Prebis Foundation, Darlene Marco Shiley, and by the following. by viewers like you. Thank you.